Hello everybody, this is Sam McCann and we are here in Southern Illinois, beautiful Southern Illinois, on the final Sunday before the election. I want to talk to you about a couple of things, a few issues that have been brought up along the way uh, this campaign season. We started circulating petitions back in April of this year. Uh, we got on the ballot the end of June and we have crisscrossed the state all summer and fall long. And there have been several issues that have been brought to our attention about our campaign, several things that have been said by the press and, and the Republican Party and some other folks that I want to clear up. First and foremost, I got into this race because I feel called to lead, because I believe our state is, has been crippled from a lack of leadership from both parties for far too long. I believe that Bruce Rauner has proven that after four years, he's incapable of leading. Uh, he and the party that he bought has been incapable of getting us out of the mess that has been created and that they have helped to add to. Furthermore, I think it's very obvious to just about, to, to most of us, to, to most of us, especially those who identify as center-right, as conservative, as moderate, as independents, we understand that probably the worst thing that we could do would be to send J.B. Pritzker there to team up with Mike Madigan to unleash a total unbridled control of the Chicago Democratic machine on the state. Again, though, I would, I would, I would argue that we can't withstand four more years of either one of these scenarios. So that's the reason we got in the race, is I believe that after being in the Senate for nearly eight years, uh, learned enough about state government to hit the ground running. I believe that we are qualified, that we're experienced, and that we can begin leading on day one. So when you hear people say that we are in this race to only cost uh, Bruce Rauner the election, that is untrue. When you hear people say that our campaign is financed by Mike Madigan, that is untrue. When you hear people say that the, the unions are behind us, that is untrue. I got in the race because I felt called to lead in 2009 when I decided to run for the Senate. I still feel called to lead in 2018, and I believe our state needs leadership. So I don't know Mike Madigan. I've only met the man twice, to my, to my recollection, and I don't know J.B. Pritzker. I've only met that man uh, on two or three very, very short occasions. So this is all about leadership doing the right thing, stepping up, and, and being a man, being a citizen, and being uh, a part of the solution. Because I think if you're not willing to put yourself on the line and be a part of the solution, then you are by default a part of the problem. So when the press goes ahead and connects dots that aren't even there, they're not doing their job. What they're doing is they're selling papers, they're selling airtime, they're trying to advance their own careers. You know, I think a lot of us, m most of us in the general population, believe that journalism is some form of, uh, of public service announcement. And that's not the case. Journalism didn't start out that way, and it's not that way today. Journalism is about making money. Journalism is about selling papers and selling commercials and selling airtime and reporters getting bigger, fatter contracts and moving the their way up the ladder and they don't really care who they step on or, or step over to, to achieve it, much like a lot of politicians. There are some good public servants in politics, but there are way too many career politicians. And so just because the news says something or just because someone from either party says something, don't believe it. Fact check it, look into it, question it, use the powers of discernment that the good Lord gave you, use some common sense, and don't be a pawn in all of this because that's what the parties, both parties are, 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 are two sides of the same coin. They are like pyramids and each, each level of the pyramid is comprised of people trying to get to the top of those respective pyramids. I can tell you from, from personal experience that I remember when I first got elected in 2010 to the office in January of 2011, one of the first things that I was told by the by the more seasoned veterans there in, in the General Assembly is, don't worry about it, Sam, just, uh, just vote with the party. It really doesn't matter uh, how you vote. It doesn't matter what your constituents want. If you vote with the party, you will have herd immunity that the people 
can't really tell you, Hart, or many of the rest of, of the other elected officials, and that the people would never vote the entire party out, that they're not going to vote against everybody. And if they can't vote against everybody, they're not going to vote against you. I didn't take that advice. From day one, I chose to follow the Constitution, my conscience, the wishes of my constituents, and common sense when making decisions on how to vote. I will be the first to admit that I've not done a very good job fitting in with the political class, nor do I want to. The last thing that I want to become is one of them. So for all of my colleagues in the General Assembly who might listen to this, that is correct. The last thing I want to become is one of you because you continually tell the people, you think you're pulling the wool over their eyes, but there's more people who understand what's going on than you give credit for. You think that because you have a, a certain voting record that you can conceal what's really going on. That's one of the reasons why we chose to send some mailers into certain targeted districts to say, these people may have a voting record or, they, or these candidates may be saying the right things to you, but will they disavow themselves from their benefactor, Bruce Rauner? They have chosen not to. We began this a few weeks ago. I said from day one, after the very first mailers arrived on the very first day, I made the announcement and I've been repeating it that if they will disavow themselves from Bruce Browner, and they don't have to, uh, they don't have to endorse me. None of these candidates uh, needed to personally or professionally endorse me. All I wanted them to do was to stand up to be real, true, conservative leaders and disavow themselves from Bruce Browner. Because Bruce Browner is no conservative. He's not even a moderate. He's probably the most liberally progressive governor the state of Illinois has ever had. He makes Pat Quinn look like a conservative. And so I said from day one, if you will disavow yourself from Bruce Rauner, I will send mailers into your district thanking you for your leadership and praising you for your leadership. We'll send positive mailers into your district. But alas, not one single one of these Republicans, these so-called conservatives, decided to stand up for true conservative values. They continue to take money from Bruce Rauner. They continue to take money from the unions. I want you to think about this. In the Senate Republican Caucus, the number one funding source for the Senate Republican Caucus is actually the union. Local 150, the union that has, has endorsed me. Uh, they've endorsed me as the conservative candidate for their membership. They realize that their membership is split 50-50 between conservatives and liberals and they endorse me as their conservative candidate for governor, and I appreciate that. And they realize that they have conservative membership, that they have members within their organization that deserve to be represented, and they want them to have a voice and a vote on election day. That same union is the leading funding source for the Senate Republican Caucus. Now, the Senate Republican Caucus doesn't like to talk about that because they have another narrative that they like to advance, but the facts are the facts. The House Republican Caucus, their number one funding source is liberal progressive Bruce Rauner, and their number two funding source is Local 150. So these are facts that you can fact check, and I know these pesky facts get in the way for these career politicians, but that's just the way it is. So please don't think that I'm sitting here saying that I'm perfect, because I'm not. I'm one of the least perfect individuals to ever walk the face of this earth, but I do wake up every day wanting and attempting to do better, to be better than I was yesterday, to make this a better place for my family and for yours and for all of us. And what I really want to see happen is leadership come to the forefront, regardless of what party it would come from. I personally believe that both parties, both of the major parties, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party here, I'm talking about in the state of Illinois, I'm not talking about nationally, I'm talking about at this point, the state of Illinois, they have forgotten who they serve. They seek to serve themselves. And only we can take that power away from them. And that's what elections are. Elections at their very root are a transfer of power. You transfer your power, the power that the Constitution grants you as a co-equal citizen in this state to elected leadership. 
There are 177 state reps and, and senators. That's the General Assembly. There are six constitutional officers statewide, and we have a, a, a Supreme Court. We as citizens of Illinois transfer our power for a two-year period or a four-year period or whatever that, that particular election is for that particular elected officer. You're transferring your power to them for that period of time. Please treat this transfer of power with this, the gravity that it demands. This is not just about this election. It's not just about the, this generation. This is about where does this state go? Where does this state go when it comes to the next generation and the generation after that and into the next century? That's what we're, we're, we're doing in this election is we're choosing, we're plotting the course as to how this state moves forward. If we want to stop the outflow, the out-migration of, of citizens of this state, if we want to fix the infrastructure, build, rebuild the bridges, repave the roads, have good schools, make it a place, a destination location. A des we, we should be a destination economy. We're the crossroads of the industrialized Western Hemisphere. We have more to offer than any other single location in the Western Hemisphere. We should be growing by leaps and bounds. Instead, we're last in the 50 states when it comes to growth, to economic growth. We can change this, but we can't change it by continuing to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And the same mistakes would be voting for Madigan and Pritzker to run this state, allowing the Chicago machine unbridled, unfettered access to state government. It would also be equally wrong to allow Bruce Rauner and the rhinos that he controls to have unbridled, unfettered access to state government. He's proven that he's not worthy of your vote, that he's not a leader. So, I come here today to ask you for your vote, not because I'm perfect, not because I can go there and fix it all by myself overnight, because I can't. But what I can do is listen to what you have to say. Listen to what you have to say. Listen to my conscience. Use the Constitution as a guide. Use some common sense along the way. And make Illinois what we want it to be. We can rebuild Illinois together. We can work together and we stick together. We can make Illinois great again. But we have to embrace working with the President of the United States and his administration. We have to embrace not declaring war on groups of people at every turn. We have to embrace a balanced budget. We have to embrace realigning our spending, not always talking about taxing. Everybody talks about the tax rate all the time. Nobody ever talks about how much we're spending. What I will do within the first month of taking office is deliver a balanced budget to the General Assembly. It will be balanced. If the General Assembly takes it through their committee process and gets it through both chambers and brings it back to me in some unbalanced form, I will use, I will use the, the powers vested in the governor by the Constitution, extraordinary powers, to balance the budget I will use, the line item veto, the, redu the reduction veto, to make sure that we live within our means, to make sure that we pay down past due bills, to make sure that this state gets on the footing that it has to get on, that we've been promised for decades that no one has delivered on. If you will give me the opportunity, I truly believe that you will be satisfied with the results. If you're not satisfied with the results, I can assure you that both parties will stand ready to resume control in four years. They will give you that opportunity. But I don't think you will want to give them that opportunity after you see what four years of leadership looks like. Remember this, Bruce Rauner is running for governor because he wants to make the party he owns and controls stronger. Pritzker is running for governor because he and Madigan want to make the Democratic Party stronger. I'm running for governor not to make a party stronger, but to make our state stronger. God bless you. Thank you for taking the time to listen.